here's Diablo Apox. Leap of Faith again by Anduin Vildanslo, and Medivh's gonna be able to finish him off. Three kills, a triple for BFM. And now Diablo being surrounded. Faith falling to 25%, now Condemn, and Diablo's down. That might be the actual play of the game. They find another kill. Apocalypse coming out, though. Red team. Oh my god! Red team almost got him. Axon jumping over to get some kills. Um, oh, Ragnarok getting the concussion mine, knocking him out into the fray. Oh, the definition of unlucky! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the NGS Game of the Week pregame show. It's Murda here, joined by my man Stoic tonight. We got Chili Mountain versus X Fan Club. It's week three. Stoic, how's it going, my man? Good. Storm Divi's chugging along, and I'm loving it. It's been a great game so far. Uh, they have been fantastic, right? Yeah. I, I, there have been, like, thinking about the uh, some, of these, some of these matchups coming down to, like, three percent on the core like one or two basic attacks away yep. so many of these matches have been absolute down to the wire such like like photo finish well hopefully you guys tuned in last week we had our pre-game show and stoic was on the money with so much of that analysis calling all those pre-game picks uh made Slexi and i look pretty darn good during the main show uh so stoic i'm excited to do this again for week number three uh, of course, we had Chili Mountain with us last week, and I think we did cast Seapog X Fan Club earlier in the season as well. So we're getting our second look already at both of these teams, which is kind of cool for us here on the Game of the Week show. Yeah. Uh, some things have changed slightly, though, for both of these teams, uh, coming with a little bit of a different, uh, different look. Uh, for example, Chili Mountain has done a little bit of role swapping, and we've seen a huge improvement in their play. I mean, they were a strong team coming into the qualifiers um, but the Chili Mountain we've seen week over week has continued to improve and become a real force to be reckoned with. Um, so well, going in, go ahead. Let, let's remind them of how they got here during the qualifying phase. I'm going to pull up our bracket all the way back from qualifier number three, where Chili Mountain used to be known as we take these, knocked off regen two to nothing in the qualifier three grand finals. And they've been waiting around for matches ever since. But so far here in the Storm Division regular season, yet to win a match, Stoic. Yeah, and, you know, honestly, it could have gone um, either way last week. It was it was great games. I mean, some of those some of those were just down to the base race. Uh, you know, you had, what, what, what did uh say, base race two, electric boogaloo. Um, <laughs> with the role swapping, I mean, they it seems like they kind of hit their stride and really – really made a good showing against VGM, which is, you know, one of these top teams. So Chili Mountain, they're here to play. They're going to bring it definitely. Looking for that first win tonight will mean a lot as we go into, you know, about we're more than a third of the way through this regular season. And to look at how the Seapog X fan club got, got here, of course, they are the NGS Season 9 Heroic Division Grand Champions. They entered the qualifiers here for the Storm Division, ended up winning qualifier number four, also over regen. Uh, but this time it was 2-1, Seapog X Fan Club defeats them in Qualifier 4. That's how they earned their spot. And they're doing just a little bit better here on the season so far. In the regular season, Seapog X Fan Club currently sitting at a 1-1 one one record after beating the other Koreans and losing to Team Alexander. Yeah, both of these teams getting matched up with Team Alexander early on. Um... So Team Alexander being that like uh, that gatekeeper in the way that Regen was trying to be in this qualifiers, you know CPX is the CPOG X fan club, excuse me, has um, they I mean they're really just showing in all of their games though the power of like you know Noah BKB Legacy playing together for such a long time, and Tori's been on the squad for a minute, and Mysticles who played with them back on the Team Good Guys days, which I just found out recently. Like this is a, a team that has lots of history. Um, so I think they're going to feel like the favorites coming into tonight's matchup. Awesome. Well, let's take a quick look at the current Storm Division standings. As it stands, as of tonight, as of right now, uh, there may be a couple matches that haven't been reported. Actually, no, I think everything is reported. This is the first match of Week 3, so look at that. Up-to-date standings. Congratulations, everyone, all those captains out there. It's Team Exodia currently sitting on top with the best record uh, they've won both of their matches, sit with a map score of 6-3. and three. Just behind them is Team Alexander. They have two match wins with a map record of 6-4. and four. 
But then you see Seapog X Fan Club. They're playing tonight. They're in fourth place. And you have Chili Mountain, unfortunately, sitting at the bottom in a tie with uh, Can't Think of Name. So perhaps CPX Fan Club a bit of an overdog tonight. I think I think that might be a little of the situation. I mean, Chili Mountain is so so strong. If you look at the three two three rankings from our very own DB Smiley, puts Chili Mountain in that B tier. And if they want to stay honestly above that middle line, they're going to need to pull out a win tonight. They have it in them. I mean, it's definitely um, it's definitely in their capabilities. But if they don't, um, I think this will be a a pretty large upset that will shift the standings going forward. Yeah, I mean, it's just unfortunate. Whenever you have to play against the best teams to start off the season and you start off 0-2 in those games, uh, you start kind of questioning your own abilities. Like, are we good enough to be here? Uh, like, What's going wrong right now, team? But I, I think this is still a team that is worthy of the consideration being in that B tier right now. Maybe even we see them start moving up towards the A tier as they can get some wins under their belt. And tonight is a big one for them because if they drop... To the CPX fan club, I have got to believe that DB Smiley will be dropping them down to that C tier and maybe even moving the CPOG X fan club up to the B tier. Yeah, uh, I, I think I think you're totally right here. And I think this is beyond like the outside rankings. And you touched on this, like Chili Mountain needs this victory for themselves. Like they've gone up against the top two teams in Storm Division. So, you know, two of the best coordinated HOTS teams. Um, I think pulling out a win today is going to mean a lot for the morale of a team. So, of course, tonight, with the start of week number three, we have some interesting news coming out for not only the Storm Division, but also the rest of the Nexus Gaming series. Both Diva and Gazlo are both live now, so we might end up getting to see the Diva or the Gazlo, which we haven't seen to this point, and maybe that makes a difference in some of these games we see this evening. Yeah, I here's my hot take. I think that Diva will likely make a showing in three games tonight maybe more i'm not sure but i think diva is going to be much more impactful in this storm division gaslow possibly um but i think diva definitely has made a real impact in the north american uh meta in hots and so i think that diva will will definitely be showing up i mean both of these teams are willing to kind of flex and rolls and comps and things um so i, I think that uh they're willing to push that issue and, and bring in the diva and, and let her let her rip. Any heroes you feel as though are starting to maybe fall off a bit, um, maybe played a bit better in the early portion of this regular season, but maybe heroes we won't be seeing as much here in week number three? Lucio and Murden, actually. Both of them were, like, surprisingly high pick rates in Storm Division. Um, like, Murden was, like, 50% or something. Both have dropped significantly in week two. Uh, both hardly saw play. Um, and in, in like to take their spot, interestingly enough, Cassia and Johanna have risen really high. Neither of them made a big splash. Both of them had a huge rise in games in week two. I imagine that week three we'll see similarly. Cassia, Johanna, um, kind of hanging around where they, the kind of their pick rate from previous week, from week two, excuse me. While I imagine Lucio and Murden kind of fade off a little bit. Now, I know there's at least a couple heroes we've been seeing a ton of, whether it's picks, whether it's bans, Garrosh and Chromie. Where do you feel they sit right now? I know Chromie had a bit of struggles getting some wins, but last week on the Game of the Week, we got to witness Chromie's first win of the season here in the Storm Division. So any thoughts on those two heroes, Garrosh and Chromie? Yeah, you know, um, both Garrosh and Chromie have sub-50% win rates in Storm Division, uh, but they are top picks or top bans. Uh, across this i mentioned this last week and i stand by it that if you see these you know these super contested heroes um like the garrosh chromie or anna for example sometimes a team will have to make a sacrifice in the in the drafting phase to get that hero and oftentimes that can leave them vulnerable and so this, this is why the drafting becomes so important here uh, i expect the garrosh and chromie to be a hundred percent participation in all of the matches tonight i mean banned or picked most likely banned um even with those low win rates Ana the same way uh, expected yep. to be banned for most of this series. Yeah, we've seen a ton of Ana. I mean, I, in my opinion, she's the one healer that if you let through a quality support player for a team is just going to absolutely take control of the match, shut you down. Uh, you try to engage, big sleep dart in your face, bye-bye. Uh, we're out of here, or we're going to turn this fight right around on you. 
uh, well, I think one of the scariest supports. And of course, you have a healer like Deckard Kane, who follow up CC maybe uh, better than anyone. And with the initiation, even you can bring with a stay a while and listen, setting up so many plays. We've seen a lot of Diablo paired in with that Apox stay a while and listen combo is just so nasty. And it's been something we've seen a ton of so far in Storm Division. Yeah, uh, I mean, you touched on some of these Storm Division picks, specifically the healers. Uh, the Deckard is actually interesting because it's a pick that both Legacy and Mason Blaze, <laughs> they're uh, they're willing to jump on that Deckard. And interestingly, like Stukov is also still up there, but I think that Anduin is also going to be another contested pick. Both Legacy and Mason Blaze like playing the Anduin. They both have really good Leap of Faiths. Um, saw some of those just even today in the in-houses. So I think that um, I think Anduin's actually another hero to healer excuse me to look out for in tonight's match so up on your screen right now i think a lot of you at home enjoyed this last week where we pulled up our top three uh heroes for each role and tonight you can see we're selecting anna deckard kane and anduin as our top three healers to look out for here in this matchup uh we've already mentioned all three so i think it's time to start taking a look at the tank position next stoic where uh, we decided to settle on Garrosh, Johanna, and ETC. Any words on any of these three? Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, BKB here, a lot of other tank players are ignoring Johanna. Uh, BKB showing what the Blessed Shield bot can really do uh, in week two here. And so I think that like de definitely Diablo could make a showing and he can make a, a splash, the scary Lord of Terror that he is. Uh, but I imagine the BKB will, will pull out the Johanna a couple of times in tonight's match. So for the solo lane, this is a bit interesting because, of course, we got to see Chili Mountain last week and we got to see some absolutely beastly Yorel, but we ended up keeping our solo lane selections the exact same as our week number two matchup. It's still Yorel, Malfiel, and Blaze. Has anything changed, in your opinion, for any of these three, or are they just still that dominant? I think that they're, they're really still that dominant. Here's something interesting, though. Tori is a, is a strong solo lane player, which means to be that, you have to be good at Yorel. Um, Zanaris, who's recently swapped spots with Mason Blaze for Chili Mountain, I think it seems to me from his play, prefers the Malfiel, which is interesting because there's the classic, you know, Yorel is so great, but Malfiel counters Yorel. So we might see some of that. Um, there might be a play even for contesting Yorel or letting Yorel through to pick up that Malfiel to counter. And then Blaze is just like super solid and should always be there. But we want to reserve our uh, ability to think that Nintori might actually be picking up some lost Vikings tonight as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on Balog, Olaf, and Eric? Played it twice uh, to pretty good effect in uh, against Team Alexander, so it's it's definitely a possibility. I think that the lost Vikings, uh, the, the new their new changes make them a make them a menace. I mean, for a competent player to play the Vikings, it is an annoyance in the early game to have to deal with that, and then it becomes a, a force to be reckoned with late game. All right, our final role to take a look at, of course, is the DPS position where Chromie remains one of the most picked and banned heroes in the entire league. Uh, we also picked up Greymane here and Raynor as our other two choices. Stoic, uh, will we actually see a Chromie game tonight, or does she just get banned every single one? I don't know. I think she. I think she probably gets banned every single game. It, it, and as weird as it is, I, mean, I think Roger is just Greymane. Every game that he can play Greymane, he's going to play Greymane. That's just that's the shtick. Uh, maybe Cassia here and there, but it's really Greymane. Interestingly enough, like uh, I think that I think the Chromie is just going to be banned. She's just hard to deal with. Has that that huge burst. The Rainer's on there because Rainer has just been showing is such a solid, consistent uh, range DPS in Storm Division. I mean, there's even a chance that we see Rainer banned. I mean, Rainer got banned last week in week yep. two of uh, it's It's a weird world that we live in, but Rainer could <laughs> see bans this week as well. All right, so that brings us to our final portion of the show, Stoic. It's time for us to make some pregame predictions. Who's got your money tonight uh, if you had to pick here between Chili Mountain and the Seapog X fan club? You know, I... Both these teams come out of a loss, but I'm going to give this one to Chili Mountain, 3-2 uh, over Seapog X Fan Club. I think we're in for a, a long five-game series that's going to be a brutal slugfest. Yep. And we're going to see some fun stuff, but I think we're definitely going game five where Chili Mountain ekes out that victory. Uh, 
I love both these teams. I think they got some quality players on both sides. I do think it will be a 3-2 to two score, but Stoic, I'm going to take the other end of that one. Seapog X Fan Club in five games, I think, will be our final score. Uh, so we have a split decision here, Stoic. And last week, I think I barely beat you. You had the 3-0. I thought it was going to be a 3-1 a or 3-2, and it was a 3-2. Uh, I think the price is right, and Slexia takes it. <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. Stoic, any final words before we head on out of here? Uh, no, I think we're in for a great series. I think that we're going to see some... I, I would put my money that we're going to see some fun stuff. All right, well, if you want to follow Stoic, head on over to Twitter at HLS Stoic. Find them on Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash HLS Stoic. Uh, be sure to sit tight. We got 15 minutes or so until our match will begin. It's going to be starting at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 p.m. Pacific. Don't go anywhere. Enjoy the break, and we hope to see you guys back in about 15. Until then, I've been Murda. He's been Stoic, and we'll see you guys in just a bit. and Majid's gonna be able to finish him off. Three kills, a triple for BFM. And now Diablo being surrounded. Fade falling to 25% health, condemn, and Diablo's down. That might be the actual play of the game. They find another kill. Apocalypse coming out though. Red team. Oh my God. Red team almost got him. Axon jumping over to get some kills. Um, oh, Ragnarok getting the concussion mine, knocking him out into the fray. Oh, the definition of unlucky. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the NGS Game of the Week. I'm Murda, joined tonight by, unfortunately, nobody. Uh, my co-host couldn't make it to the actual show. Stoic's got a match. Slexia had to take care of something else, unfortunately, tonight. So it's just going to be me this evening. Hopefully that's okay with you. Uh, certainly is perfectly okay with me. I'm excited for this one tonight. We have two really exciting teams, which I've already had the pleasure of casting both of them this season already. It's Chili Mountain on the left and Seapog X Fan Club on the right. We've seen these guys. We know a bit about them. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that pregame show. Shout out to Stoic for helping me put that one on. Uh, he's been doing a, a tremendous job helping me put those together, uh, keeping the entire show afloat with that pregame analysis. Uh, hello to all you guys hanging out. Let me make sure our teams are setting up on the right side, or in this case, the left side. Uh... <clears throat> okay. Um, so, yeah. We are in our lobby. Looks like game number one is going to be Tomb of the Spider Queen, chosen by the Seapog X Fan Club. So I'm going to show you guys our map band screen. Take a quick peek at that so you can see what happened. In the meantime, before this one gets started, on the left, Chili Mountain, Bandaway, Cursed Hollow, and Braxis Holdout. Over on the right side, Seapog X, Fan Club, Bandaway, Alterac Pass, and Dragon Shire. Game number one, picked by the Seapog X Fan Club, will be Tomb of the Spider Queen. And, oh yay, look at that. They're getting on the correct sides now for me. Lovely. Uh... So welcome, I see in chat we had uh, Unavenged Hots was here, Mrs. Windup Bird was here a bit earlier, Stark is in the house, and Bakji is back again. Thank you for being here tonight. <clears throat> Do want to remind you guys, all bits and subs that come on during the broadcast go directly towards the casters that are casting the match. 
for any Storm Division match. So if you love me, you like Murda, you want to support me, you can consider putting some bits in chat. If you want to do your NGS sub tonight, that's fantastic as well. Uh, I'm doing some cool stuff, uh, trying to get a secret present for someone. So if you can throw some bits out, throw some subs out, it'll really help that present happen for this special person. Uh, so yeah. Mrs. Windup Bird says, I will co cast for a stoic smiley face. Uh, maybe next time. Hopefully next time. No facial hair, little baby murder. Yeah, I trimmed it up today. You see that? What was I thinking? Why did I do that? I don't even know. Uh, it was getting very long. If you guys saw me over the weekend, it was like, it was like beard murder. Uh, it was Miss Murda. She was like, Can you please shave that murder? Uh, sometimes she actually does call me murder, by the way. Uh, I kept teasing her. I said, the more you ask, the longer it's going to take me to do it. And then today, I, I, yeah, shaved it off. So, still kind of stubbly, but beard is gone. Sorry about that. Angus in the house says, bring on Mrs. Windup Bird. Uh, man, is there going to be a riot in the stream? Is that what's about to happen? We got two more players here from the Seapog X fan club before we get going. Speaking of Miss Murda, she just texted me. She probably heard me say that. <laughs> she said, I can hear you. Yikes. Well, we have Noah in the house now, waiting on our final player. All right, you can't keep texting me all night. Uh, can't keep texting me all night. I got a cast, okay? But we are waiting for more players, so might as well hang out and have some fun for a bit. Mrs. Wine Bird says, maybe next time is the new, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing. If I bring you on and then, like, Stoic gets out of his match, he might be joining us later on. We have this awkward situation. Stoic right now, he's playing a match. He's being casted over on DB Smiley's channel. So if you want to support Stoic and say thank you for that amazing pregame show that he did with me, uh, go support his team right now. Phoenix Rising Citrine. They're playing, uh, I forget who they're playing against, but go root for them. PRC. And there's Angus Lee starting the riot in chat. <laughs> uh, BJ and Co. Ben says she can and she likely will, lol. That is very true as well. <clears throat> Where's our final player? In and out of this lobby. We are about six minutes past start time. Oh, everyone's here now. Okay, I'm going to take advantage of that and throw my R in chat. Tomb of the Spider Queen will be game number one. <clears throat> I need to drink more water. I have this, like, cough in my throat. And it's not going to get any better with solo casting tonight. So, first drinks on me. If you guys want to support me, you can drop some of your uh, points in chat. Your NGS points. I don't know which one is set for hydrate. If there is one for hydrate, I'll do all the drinking for it. So just let me know. It's probably a challenge to Miss Windup Bird. I'm sure she has some points. She loves making me drink water. Uh, toxic. Ooh, no. That's not toxic. Don't say that, Miss Windup Bird. We just need to hear back from the CPX fan club and we can get underway here. We have our ready check from Chili Mountain already. Uh, Chili Mountain coming in with a map or a match record, I should say, of zero and two. The Seapog X fan club a match record of one and one. Um, so who's favored tonight? I don't know. Uh, Chili Mountain they've had harder matchups so far. Uh, we talked about it during the pregame how they already played against VGM. They played against Team Alexander. Uh, Seapog X Fan Club, they played against Team Alexander, and they played against the other Koreans. However, Seapog X Fan Club was able to win one of their matches. They beat the other Koreans, and with that better match record score right now, are they the favored team to win tonight? That's the question you guys need to be asking yourselves at home. I picked during the pregame. I said Seapog X Fan Club are going to win this matchup 3-2. to two. Stoic thinks Chili Mountain is going to win tonight's matchup 3-2. to two. So a split decision on the pregame panel. You guys at home can be the deciding vote, so to speak. Um, and maybe I'll put out a poll right now just to kind of get the chatter started. Let's see. Who will win tonight's match? Chili 
Yeah, type this right. Chili Mountain or C Pog X Fan Club. Poll is open. It's going to take about 30 seconds to reach you guys, or at least until you hear me say this. It's already live in chat for you, though. Select the team you want to win. Be sure to hit the submit button. I'll keep an eye on these votes. And it'll help break the tie of who's going to win. Again, I pick Seapog X. Stoic pick Chili Mountain. Here we go. Game number one draft is underway. Tomb of the Spider Queen. Welcome on in. Left hand side tonight, Chili Mountain. They are going to be the first to pick and ban here on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Mason Blaze tonight with that captain's crown on the other end. It'll be Noah. Drafting here for the Seapog X fan club. Talked about the Chromie pregame. Said it's going to be one of those highly contested picks and or bans. I'd imagine probably more of a ban. Uh, the other one probably going to see banned out is Ana. I think a lot of Ana bans are going to happen tonight as well. Here on Tomb of the Spider Queen, maybe a bit different of a meta. We mentioned Johanna as being one of those tanks that we're likely to see hop into the, the tank pool this evening. On a map like Tomb of the Spider Queen, I think it's her best one to grab her on. So, does she get banned out early? Uh, there's that Chromie I just mentioned. And already, Murda is one for one. <clears throat> hot drinks are superior in fall and winter. It is cool out right now. It's not hot out. Uh, I actually have my blanket here in case it gets too chilly. I like to put that on and keep myself warm. But for now, we don't need it. There's a D.Va ban. That's something else to mention. D.Va and Gazlo tonight are both available. The two-week embargo on those two heroes is no more. Both are available. And, hey, Gazlo on Tomb of the Spider Queen? Maybe. He's got plenty of wave clear. I think his uh, laser beam now it does a consistent amount of damage. It's much quicker to cast as well. There's the ban on the Tracer. We know Noah loves playing that hero. Won't be able to play it here in game one. And there's the ban onto Garrosh, our number one tank we chose for this evening. Is going to leave open the Ana here for the Chili Mountain to make a decision on. Do they want that top tier support, that S tier healer? Could be decent for them. Uh, it doesn't bring a ton in terms of assisting with the wave clear. Of course, it'll help out your mages. You get that nano boost. You get all the sleep darts, all the setup. But they want this Junkrat who was a prime target last week in the game of the week teams are fighting over him and it looks as though they might be fighting over him again this week here in week number three gonna send it now over to the seapog x fan club they grab that johanna looks like noah's gonna hop on the hero and legacy is gonna pick up a malfurion early uh this is a port we did not mention during the pregame, and we're gonna get an early look at it uh roots are Pretty easy to throw down with Malf. You find a target, you keep a target there. It's going to draw out some medallion usage, I'm sure. Will those items be successful? Will they be burnt out and be sitting on a five minute cooldown at the wrong moment? We'll find out. There's a pick for Diablo, one of our other tanks we mentioned this evening, and top tier support. Weary Day playing the Ana. Final ban set coming up next. C Pog X fan club with their tank and their healer. Other side tank and healer already. So might be looking at banning out some of these offlaners. Yorel, one of those high priority picks, as well as the Blaze. Maybe even the Imperius as options here. But it's going to be the Jaina instead, knowing the Ana's on the other end. They don't want that nano boosted Jaina becoming any sort of trouble for them here. Uh, wave clear also really strong. Just throw down a blizzard, maybe a Kona cold. You got that entire wave down. So Jaina, the final ban here for the CPX fan club. One ban remains. It belongs to the Chili Mountain, which is five seconds left to make this pick. Do they ban out one of those soul laners? No. It's just going to be the Tychus this time. Want to try to protect their Diablo as much as they can. No minigun here. Now they might have to start thinking about the Grey Main, the top tier damage uh, for the offlane. Maybe the mouthfeel. Get yourselves a last rights. Find some sort of percentage damage with the Curse Bullet. Um, and of course the trait from mouthfeel and the last rights to be able to kill off this Diablo. Wouldn't be surprised if we get either of those picks here. And now I'm surprised we didn't get either of them. 
Uh, Mephisto and Genji. Mephisto, of course, can get a bit of access with his Lightning Nova into a bit of uh, percentage damage. I think that's at 13. And Genji. Uh, okay, so a finisher. Maybe they just want to try to threaten the Junkrat and on a backline, which is pretty flimsy to say the least. There's Roger getting the gray main he wanted, and Zanaris is gonna find a Yorel. I still think there's it makes sense to grab the mouthfeel here. The matchup into Yorel is really good. <clears throat> um They still need a solo laner, they need percent damage to deal with Diablo. Malfeel's my pick here. We'll see what they decide to do. <clears throat> Leoric. Hey, you know, this works as well. They're going to have one of the most impactful heroics at level 20 now with that um, Buried Alive. Might make a difference in the uh, late game if it gets that far. You guys picked... Uh, let, me, let me make sure I don't misspeak here. You guys picked Chili Mountain. 100% of you pick Chili Mountain to win tonight's matchup. <clears throat> but let's find out who you think is going to win game number one. Who will win game one? Will it be Chili Mountain or CPX Fan Club? Head on over to chat. Place your votes now. Uh, looking at these drafts, I think it's going to be Chili Mountain, honestly. They have this pretty threatening comp. They got S-tier heroes all the way around the board. We talked about all these picks during the pregame. They got every single one they wanted. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm going to pick Chili Mountain. CPX Fan Club, decent squad. If they can find kills with this Genji, you know, maybe it's a different story. I think Wave Clear might be an issue. The Johanna's going to help. But I still think Chili Mountain going to take this game number one. Let's load on in and start introducing some of our players here on the left-hand side. We got Mason Blaze playing the Junkrat Tremor on Diablo. Zanaris on the Yarel. Roger, of course, playing the Grey Main. And the last pick will be Anna, played by Weary Day. Give it up for the Chili Mountain. Here on the red side, we got Noah playing the Johanna here in game one. Got Filth on Genji, Mysticles on Mephisto. That'll be Leoric for Nintori and got Filth. Oh, nope, excuse me. I already said got Filth. It's Legacy on Malfurion is the last one. Make some noise. They're known as the Seapog X Fan Club. Is CPX in the house tonight? Make some noise if you're out there. Satat so here for the memes. Welcome for the memes. Hopefully some dreams as well. Early Lightning Nova being played to a bit of a bail there. Nice sleep though from Ana on the way back from that shade. It's then Tori having to get on out of there on Leoric and start heading down towards his bottom lane. It's going to be Yarel, of course, versus the Leoric and Tori versus Anaris. And already landing one of those spectral leeches, <clears throat> getting a bit of health and keeping that health bar nice and high, clearing out that wave much quicker than the Urel's able to, at least on that first wave. And now making the rotation up towards mid, where Nintori wants to help keep these waves cleared out and heavily in favor of their side. Game one prediction, 67% says Chili Mountain will win this game number one as we follow Nintori back on down to the bottom lane. Daenerys leaping all over the place. Here's those level 1 talents you guys are yet to see. 19 stacks already on the Black Soul Stone for Diablo. Uh, will be the Slumber Darts build. Slumber Shells, rather, for Ana. Maybe a rotation coming to this bottom lane. Look at God, Filth, and Legacy. Not finding Yorel yet. They want the Siege Camp. On the left-hand side, Chili Mountain just activated their own Bruiser Camp. Sending it out towards the mid lane. First follow of the night coming through. This one from Velaravia, my friend. And, you know, I'll call you RG family, okay? The RG personal chef. Camp. It's gonna be stolen away here, actually, by Chili Mountain. This one was started up by the CPX fan club, but a great invade coming in, a bit more threatening that time for uh, the old Chili boys as. They have the bit of extra pressure provided now by the Siege Giants in this bottom lane. Also going to keep a couple other heroes along with them. Yorel's just going to bash back this Leoric, the one sole wave clear that is here as Roger going to hop in and out of Worgen form, into the human form, get through one of those towers. And these Giants are still untouched 
throwing stones at the wall and honest throwing sleep darts out it's getting pretty tough to walk in so a couple of heroes gonna rotate in including malfurion and mephisto to assist along with leoric and finally these giants are gonna go down but not before getting down that first tower and a considerable amount of damage done as well onto that wall so Todd here throwing down 25 bits says all I want is a quarterback and that is a quarter appreciate that tremor will be no yes no will not be the first blood of the game Diablo surviving weary day with just the right amount of healing darts to keep Diablo alive there wave clear is just gonna be Junkrat versus the Johanna in the mid and top lanes as fights continue let's follow the action here around this turn in sleep dart lands on Malfurion here's Tremor stunned into the wall very low health pops that medallion and legacy becomes first blood of the game it belongs to the chilly mountain Mr. Ghostpants8 says why does it feel like CPX fan club has no wave clear well uh, you know they have Leoric they have Johanna and they have uh, I guess Mephisto but when you bring in Genji you are gonna be lacking some wave clear you're exactly right uh, gems on hand right now for Chili Mountain they're gonna try to get him in excuse me get him in got filled with the first interrupt some shuriken thrown at Junkrat I don't think he's gonna try to get back in here again so that'll be it Mason Blaze getting the first turn in of the game for Chili Mountain Tremor trying to body block this Johanna but look at that medallion usage able to get Johanna back to safety without being flipped over by Diablo but they have to now defend up against these web weavers coming right past the four minute mark here in this game and they're still holding on to plenty of gems look at Mason Blaze 19 on hand he's been double soaking mid and top for a while as Junkrat getting some value and now gonna have a bit of help from the rest of the team there's a sleep dart oh but awoken before Diablo could get there instead it's gonna find the Genji got built now with the deflect is gonna be just fine web weaver approaching the wall here comes the first web blast see if it can target properly Ooh, it looks like it will it's gonna hit that fountain as well power is falling below 20 percent but it's just tremor able to get the auto attacks off fire stomp as well and that tower is sitting on about one health finally going to go down to a second web blast Diablo is very low getting some heals in from Ana sleep guard's going to connect as well but Tremor under a lot of trouble here 88 souls right now and will end up being sent back to base for 20 plus seconds that'll be first kill of the game for the CPX fan club but Legacy low again will die for the second time tonight Noah holding on to 44 gems 56 health Barely gonna make it out. You saw the damage potential of Mason Blaze on this junk rat there. Uh, even the sturdiest of tanks in the game, Johanna, was having a bit of trouble there getting away, but she barely was able to survive. Maybe getting one final heal from Malfurion was what kept her up there. And Mason gonna drop off a whole bunch of gems as well. It's Nintori holding on to the most right now. 28 gems with this Leoric. Another three from this wave will put him over 30. 89 total on hand right now for the CPX fan club as they're gonna have to defend against another camp in this bottom lane. Let's see what's happening up top. Noah trying to turn in some gems. Holding on to those 46. Gonna also need uh, either Mysticles or Godfilth to turn their gems in as well. Maybe see if they can get Leoric in uh, down there in the bottom lane, but he's gotta deal with this siege camp. We saw what happened earlier, was not able to deal with it. Roger is here. Uh, Urel was here as well. This time, Curse Bullet coming out. Level 10 pickup for Roger. Threatens Leoric back. Here has to come the Genji. Swift Strike in onto Greymane, but that's already damage done to the port. They're going to be happy with what they got and start leaving this spot. 31 gems in the bank now, as they were able to cash in a few. Still need Noah. Now with 50 on hand to find his way over to one of these banks. Looks like might be the bottom side and Tori Mystically is already here. Nope, they're gonna feign down towards the bottom and then instead head towards the top where Junkrat already awaits with one of his traps. Has him spotted out, concussion mine down. Bit off target but has some grenades. Pressure has to come in his face but Tremor's here this time. Roots are down and now Genji's gonna slash in looking for that switch strike but doesn't quite do enough damage to Diablo. He's got full souls now, hard to kill. And if he does go down, it's a three second cooldown until he's back on the map, which is a bit of trouble here for the CPX fan club. And Tori's gonna try to take some of that health away with that Spectral Leech, but still with plenty of HP to go. Ana in a great spot to keep Tremor active and in this fight. 
sitting at about 95% right now. No worries for him up in the top. So do they rotate to this bottom egg spawn or try to play a bit of a split decision here? No! I don't know who had those gems. Shame on me. But that's going to be back-to-back turn-ins here for the Chili Mountain. A great stun from Diablo, only finding Johanna. I don't think she has her Gladiator's Medallion right now. And also won't have the Iron Skin for just a bit either. There's a Durance of Hate. And a great Twilight Dream from Malfurion Legacy. Picks up their second kill of the game. Fantastic Tea Dream. Diablo's going to lose all of his souls. And that's a huge pickup heading into this wave. Because I, I don't know if... Chili Mountain's even gonna be able to get much value with this. They get one web blast off at mid. Top fort is likely gonna go down. Bottom fort? I think this one survives as well. They're bringing a big rotation down, but both teams actually sending heroes here. Diablo back on the map now. is gonna hop in. They get some targeting from that fort. And this pressure actually will be enough to take out two forts during this objective phase. Back-to-back turn-ins netting some value here for Chili Mountain. As now they're thinking about heading back towards mid. They find the Auric and Tori's going to be safe. Sleep Dark connects. But they're zoned out and they're kind of stuck here in this trap. Great throw down with that in two. Can they get Tremor again? Not quite. Actually, I lied. X-Strike will seal the deal. But they lose Malfurion and Mephisto in the exchange. Hashtag not worth that time, fam. Not going to steal the Bruiser Camp. A bit too risky here. Instead, Roger being sent down to the bottom lane Siege Camp. Third time in the game, they're going to be able to grab this one. And Seapog X Fan Club getting to work on that Bruiser Camp. We saw that was maybe going to be stolen away, but they're able to keep it. Send Leoric in and secure it here. Holding on to so many gems. 117, 118 plus 31. Uh, that is uh, over 150 gems total. Most of them here on Noah are going to have to avoid these traps being sent out. You see two of them waiting around this top egg spawner right now. And trying to walk in through the other way. That is not where you want to be, Johanna. Great curse bullet, but iron skin keeping her up for just a bit longer. There's that medallion again. And Noah, 230. Oh my god, we'll finally go down. All those gems are able to be picked up again. So they don't lose gems, but they lose their tank. And the Entomb not going to hit that time. The Yorick's going to be under pressure, and he goes down. Roger picking up the double kill here for the Chili Mountain. Looking for more. Uh, they're going to lose their Ana, but this fight continues. Backside now, Yorel wants to get all of these gems back, but can't? No, they're going to be able to keep them. Genji's going to pick up another 50 gems right there. Oh, my God. And they get their Web Weavers, so here they come. Top lane uh, about at midfield right now. Got Filth going to try to push that in a bit further. Has to be careful. 73 gems on hand. And you see him knowing that situation. Can't afford to lose him. And Mephisto right now. 41 gems on hand. Uh, this could be trouble. Joe aiming for the 99 gem cap. <laughs> uh, gem cap rather. Yeah. Uh, totally. Got close there. Now it might be Genji. Godfilth, yeah, look at this. He's like, I want this turn in ASAP. They are going to let this Webweaver die. They are going to want to get immediately... Oh, wait, no, they want this fight. Fort's low. They're going to go for it. X-Strike available. But Genji saving it for a bit. Now finally using it very low. Needs to get out of here. Yorel's in chase. Does he have a leap over the wall? He does have a medallion and a swift strike. Genji surviving. I think that was 69 health. Nice. Nicely done by Genji. Mystically shading out. We're going to shade back in. He's got 41 gems, and those are not going to be recovered. Huge loss there for the CPX fan club as level 16s are locked in already for Chili Mountain. They find big kills in big moments and I think have enough gems on hand for their own turn in. Would be their third of the game. Oh, no. Genji snuck off. Got filth snuck the turn in. This is a sneaky Genji. Look at this. He's so sneaky. How'd he do it? Top lane. Uh, Leoric able to wraith walk out. Just gonna have Yorel chasing him down. Here comes Got filth and chase. No ardent defender this time. 60 seconds away from Zanaris having that back online. 
Top Cloud Weaver already passed 50% health, so this one's not going to get this fort down. Probably won't even get a tower. In fact, it won't get a tower. Keeping heroes here, however, there's Iron Skin from Johanna. They need to be careful. They've lost a few of these fights already trying to stick around. Uh, but they just want to make sure their other web weavers are able to do something. This is back-to-back turn-ins we're seeing here. And it'll be Genji trying to chase down Diablo. They get the Entomb locking Tremor in. There's the Twilight Dream going to interrupt the play. Uh, or wait, I lie. That's actually Legacy with the Twilight Dream. What am I thinking? Turnaround, though. Apox there. Great medallion from Mephisto. But the Shade going to put him right back in harm's way. That is, I believe, his third time dying. Four deaths in the game for Legacy on Malfurion as Noah's going to go down to a concussion mine. There's a boot back onto Leoric as well. Oh, baby, it's a triple kill for Chili Mountain. And they're looking for more. They find Legacy again. That charge in from Tremor. The body blocks are there. Now turning it into a quad kill. Level 18 to 16 is a two-level lead right now. Boss wide open. And it looks like that's where they're headed to. They want to get something of value here, 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 here. On Tomb of the Spider Queen. Murda.exe is broken, apparently. This would be a very quick boss. Gray main here, played by Roger. Popping off in Worgen form. Uh, picking up some inner beast talents at 1 and 13. Getting that additional movement speed, but Executioner at 16 really helping secure that last kill there uh, that quad kill set you saw now three quarters of a level until they reach level 20 they have gems for a turn in they have a boss uncontested right now actually in the top lane I want to say thank you for the raid coming in Linehouse party of 15 welcome your table is ready storm division here week number three between chili mountain and the sea pog x fan club and quite the start already for the Chili Mountain up 12 to 5 in kills, level 20 talents just moments away. This is their third Webweaver phase of the game, earlier having back to back phases. And now with a level 20 phase, looking to find the first keep of the game. You're always going to be in that bottom lane trying to get through a catapult in her face and maybe send that Webweaver towards yet another fort, or excuse me, keep. But mid lane is where the majority of the pressure will be started up here for Chili Mountain. Let off uh, a lot of this damage by this Junkrat. Mason Blaze doing a fantastic job so far. Keeping those traps down. Concussion Mine on the last play was fantastic as well. Made the quad kill possible. And Captain Wedge in chat being a fantastic co-caster here saying the Arel and Diablo combo really are controlling so much of this matchup. And speaking of Yorel, able to get this wave all the way down to the keep. There's the APOC combo onto Misty, please, but Mephisto safe for now. Riptire not going to do too much, but a decent reset. You see at level 20, picking up extra oomph. Cooldown reduction will be in for uh, 25 seconds for each hero that it hits. And Leoric, still without that Buried Alive, making this dream possible to maybe finish off this keep right now. Even without this Webweaver, they know the 20 talent should be enough, and... Threatening a Johanna like that. Yeah, that's a tough moment for Noah when you're below 50% health to save this keep. And then Tori's going to try to reduce all the attack power that he can. Maybe they take this fight. In fact, they do. Fantastic and Tomb onto Weary Day. And Ana is down. Tremor's low as well. Stuck inside some roots, but will not fall. It is a one for nothing exchange. And looking for more is Mystically's. Can't quite finish off Diablo. 300 health. Made it out. And then Tori's here again. And finally... Diablo will fall a great double kill and souls reset again onto Diablo. Still no level 20s, but doing that without 20s is an impressive feat. About to turn in 49 gems here. They need to get a few more in the bank. Legacy and Mystically's holding out the 2 and 4 respectively. It's Noah who has the gems they need for this turn in. So Johanna going to start making the move. Towards this egg spawner on the top side, checking out a bush with that shield glare, making sure no one's here. But now having second thoughts, doesn't want to lose those 19 gems, doesn't want to take a chance not knowing where everyone's at. Uh, of course, us at home, we know it would have been safe there. But Noah making the safe play, going to get a couple more gems now heading back in. Maybe he did some bad math? He had enough. I think it, maybe it was just some bad math. Are we allowed to say that? 
Red Web Weaver stacked up with a Bruiser Camp and will be combated here at mid by Chili, Ma Chili Mountain's own Bruiser Camp they just picked up. Fort below 50% health, so likely going to end up falling here, especially when this Web Weaver shows up. We're going to love to see this fight that happens. Buried Alive is ready to go, and cooldown is also available. And there it is. They find Roger. Greymane stuck inside. Durance of Hate as well, and that is 27 gems on the ground. A big loss there, as now Chili Mountain does not have enough for their next turn in. This is a big opportunity here for the Seapog X fan club to not only find the first keep of the game, but maybe even have a lead heading into the next Web Weaver phase. You also have access now to Mimic for Mephisto. Mystically is picking up that talent at level 20. Here it is, which is going to allow a considerable boost now to the siege potential that Mephisto can bring here into the late portion, finishing off some of these keeps. Johanna going to help clear out the wave, and I think that's all they do. They still have Web Weaver bottom. They still have Web Weaver top. Johanna, or excuse me, Urel clearing out top. Another great in tune. This one on Diablo. X-Strike is in along with that Twilight Dream. Tremor uses that Hellgate to get out, but the Bless Shield, just the tip of it, able to lock Diablo in. That is a 60-second death timer. And now the Seapog X fan club with two keeps down can think about closing out this game one. They've been down the entire time, but with Diablo not here, uh, is this the opening they've been looking for? Poor shielding still standing right now as Dentori is no longer standing. Yorel going to chase this down. And this Riptire going to finish off Mephisto. Mysticles does not get out of this. Sleep Dart lands. Kill is through. Double kill there now for the Chili Mountain side as... Genji trying to get Yorel, didn't get it, maybe a bit exposed now, able to leap away. That cyber agility coming to use, a bit of extra distance provided in that escape. And that'll be it. Uh, I do see the caster's command was thrown down in chat, unfortunately, Slexia was unable to join me. Stoic did join me, however, for the pregame show, he's currently playing in a match over on twitch.tv slash db smiley hosted by the head caster of the nexus gaming series db smiley so it's just me tonight just murder apologies at home if you're looking for those other casters uh, i'm sure they'll be back with us next week got built needs to be careful here but a great buried alive landing onto the junk rat got built trying to swift strike in but a moment too late now tremor grabbing a hold of malfurion roots are down and that'll allow legacy to be back to a safer position Full strength, both sides, but Mephisto not quite back into the fight, just now heading out of base. And rejoining these heroes in the middle of the map. Perfect amount of gems on hand right now, but Zanaris, Roger, and Weary, they all have to turn them in to make this next Webweaver phase possible for Chili Mountain. There's the X-Strike as an escape for Got Phil. Can be put on a 60 second cooldown. Uh, we also are still waiting for the Ardent Defenders. Zanaris gonna play in here. Having that Seraphim at level 20, helping finish off the Leoric in that bottom lane is Roger. He fell pretty low, but Zanaris, so much distraction here inside this uh, choke point in this little alleyway between mid and bot. Allows for a great rip tire, which is going to be put on a very good cooldown. Only 15 seconds left until... Uh, Mason Blaze will have another Rip Tire ready to go. Going to try to send in 43 gems. Just two more needed. And they have all of them in the bank. Oh, Genji's got to be careful. 15 gems on hand and can't afford to die here. Roger clearing out the core. The shielding went down all the way to 85% is that core. And they know it. They know uh, Greymane's not here. They want to kill this Diablo. Hellgate's out with the medallion. Tremor surviving 400 health. Leoric trying to get in there. Two inside the Buried Alive as Johanna's going to press in. Condemn trying to hold them there further, but aren't Defender keeping Yorel up. Tremor gets enough healing now from Weary Day to turn around this fight. Genji's fallen the 16th kill of the game for Chili Mountain. Eight of them belonging to Rogers. Greymane, do not let this player draft this hero. He loves it. He gets the kills. And only one death in the game, looking like an MVP performance thus far. Junkrat, though, about to cross the 100k damage mark. Uh, Mason, yeah, this hero's broken as well. Now, finding the Orc, Curse Bullet, 
I don't think he gets out, and then Tori's gonna die. That's the combo potential you have. Anytime you have Diablo, find a target, Curse Bullet right behind it with Greymane. It is way too quick of the damage to deal with, family. And this is likely it. Uh, Leoric does have a quicker respawn. But he's got a while to go. Still 30 seconds. These Web Weavers are going to be all the way in the base of the Seapog X fan club. Late in the game, Catapults are here. Bruiser Camp is here and still somewhat healthy. That'll be cleared out quickly. But will these Web Weavers be enough to close out game number one? We are about to find out. Still waiting on the APOC and the Ardent Defender. This fight's going to take place. The Oryx back up has that buried alive yet again. That's the talent they need to find a kill, but very well spread out right now. Our Chili Mountain only going to be Greymane stuck inside. X-Strike will get the finish. No Ana with the burst healing necessary to keep Roger alive. He's even trying to finish off God Filth, who's now going to be in a lot of trouble on the backside of that fight. He needs to get a kill. It's going to be Greymane actually going down first. Core shield still stands. And is this the defense they're after? Maybe not with Malfurion dead. One of the Web Weavers has reached the core. Noah's going to try to clear that out, and it looks like they might be able to, but 50% on this core. Top side, Web Weaver's still here. 30%, 10%. Game number one. A quick ending to what was a 24-minute match. It's going to be handed over to Chili Mountain. Let's take a look at this match summary brought to you by Nexus Gaming Series, our fantastic host of the Storm Division. Uh, proud to be here casting this for you guys. Thank you everyone for showing up. Already 72 viewers in the house right now. You'll love to see that. Our Game 1 MVP, I think I got to give it to Mason Blaze, 4-0 on the Junkrat. 113k hero damage, plenty of value with the rip tires. Soaked up the XP, got all the siege. Uh, I mean, Junkrat, S tier hero, okay? Got to be careful letting him through those uh, drafts. Make sure he gets banned out. Here's a look at your talent screen before we move on to our first break of the night. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Got to say thank you, everyone who's here. You guys are fantastic. We have a best of five in store for you tonight. So game two is for sure happening. Game three is for sure happening. And unless the CPX fan club can take a map, uh, we might not have a game four. But we will have a total of five potential matches this evening. So strap in. Hopefully you've had your dinner, you have a big glass of water with you, or whatever you like to drink. We'll be back game number two in just a moment, but for now, a few words from our sponsors. Welcome back, NGS Game of the Week here. Storm Division matchup, week number three between Chili Mountain and the Seapog X Fan Club. I'm Murda. Welcome to the channel. If you're just now joining us, game number one went over to Chili Mountain on the backs of some fantastic play by Diablo, Greymane, and our MVP, Junkrat. 
Gotta also credit the Urel there, the Ana. Uh, the heals were outstanding. This is why you need to ban out Ana. Uh, I said pregame, Chili Mountain got every single hero they wanted. Uh, and that was the result. A pretty dominant win on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh, let's take a look at our map ban screen. I just need to set this up really quick. Uh, this is the map. I don't know who picked it. I'm assuming. Wait. Uh, draft pick. They didn't set up the draft pick. Okay. Oops, this button. So here is the map ban. Uh, it's Infernal Shrines next. Chosen by Chili Mountain. I had to make sure they actually had the draft selection ready for this patch or else we would have been restarting. You know I hate restarting, okay? Let's take a look though. Draft number two about to begin and first on the clock this time will be the Seapog X fan club. They find themselves down one nothing in this set, but it's a best of five. Plenty of time to come back. Uh, plenty of decisions to make here now with BKB rejoining this roster. Uh, I'm assuming we'll be playing the tank here in game number two as Chromie finds the first ban for the second time tonight, but this time it's the other team having to ban out the Chromie. And D.Va banned out, uh, the other team having to ban out the D.Va. Maybe a gentleman's agreement here on these two heroes tonight. The two smallest girls in the game, Chromie and D.Va, both banned away. Uh, Garrosh banned second time tonight from the Seapog X fan club. And will this be the Tracer again? We saw the Tracer ban in game number one. A little bit better maybe here on Infernal Shrines, a bit bigger of a map where Tracer can get some of the chase on. Three seconds for this decision, and instead it's the Ana. Played masterfully in game one by Weary Day. It's gonna make Noah get on the Yarel. Game one was having to play the tank position, Johanna. This time, going to move over to the solo lane. And having an early Yorel pick is our S-tier choice during the pregame. We said Yorel. We said the Malfeel. We mentioned Blaze as well. We think maybe could be some Imperius out there. Uh, but that Yorel sitting high above the rest of them, easily our number one solo lane pick of the night. Tremor is going to get the Diablo second game in a row. And Mason Blaze, our game one MVP Junkrat, will be returning as well. Uh, so now they got to consider, do they steal away the Grey Mane is strong here? This time they will get the Tychus to help deal with the Diablo. Really good here as well, having uh, the Draken Laser, which can help zone out during the Shrine. You could also go in and take that Odin, which is a lot of extra Shrine clear, but maybe doesn't provide as much zoning, except the, oh, maybe we need to run away from Odin type zoning. And Johanna for BKB, this is the tank we were expecting him to be playing tonight. That's why he was part of the pregame discussion. And joining this roster here for game two, that's exactly what he will choose on Infernal Shrines, a map that's going to feature a lot of wave clear, especially during our objectives inside the shrine, killing those skeletal defenders. Ban now onto Deckard Kane from Chili Mountain. That is the first ban or pick of the night onto Deckard Kane. Didn't see him at all in game one. And our final ban here, will it be the Grey Mane? That's my... Yeah, okay. That, that was my advice. They will follow it. So Roger's going to have to dig a bit deeper. I casted him last week. Who did he play when Grey Mane was gone? Uh, I think it was a Sergeant Hammer, actually. That was on Battlefield of Eternity. I don't think they're going to go into that again. Could just be like I don't even know will they go hammer this could be the hammer setup they're saving it all right I'm gonna I'm gonna say maybe that's a hammer pick coming last there's Anduin and blaze I like the blaze here uh, I don't think the Malfeel would have really made sense because the Johanna pick on the other end even though I like the Malfeel matchup into Yorel just a bit better uh, Blaze is going to be all right, but that does leave the Malfeel pick open. More percentage damage to deal with Diablo, and this time Stukov, instead of the Malfurion, 
will that be able to hold Diablo in place? Virulent Reaction at level 13, of course, uses up your Bile Kill Switch stack, but if you can lock in the Diablo inside that silence, he's not getting away. You can't Hellgate at 20 that time. Uh, and they have a lot of percentage damage this time. Will that change anyone's opinion at home of who's going to win this game too? Final pick. Ooh, it's not the hammer. It's Cassia. All right. <clears throat> Viewers at home, it is time to make your picks. Who is going to win this game? Number two, will it be Chili Mountain? Will it be the Pog X Fan Club? Head on over to chat right now. The poll is open. Select the team you want to win. Hit submit. I'll keep an eye on the results. Let you guys at home know who you've picked. Who do I think? Uh, well, pregame, I pick Seapog X Fan Club winning this 3-2. to two. Uh, If that's going to happen, they need to get some wins. Uh, reverse sweep here in the Storm Division, not going to be easy to do. So they need a game to win desperately. I like this comp much better than they had in game number one up against the Diablo. Having the Tychus, having the Malfield, I think it's going to make a big difference. Um, Stukov, one of the strongest supports in the game, can help shut down some of that dive as well with the swipes at level 10. Maybe that makes a difference over just the Twilight Dream that Malfurion had in game number one. You guys need to, uh, to decide at home. Place your votes. Game number two. Here we go. Let's start introducing some of our players and welcome on in to Infernal Shrines. On the left-hand side, Zanera is going to play the Blaze. Roger making the move over to Junkrat this time. It won't be Mason Blaze. Mason's going to be on that Cassia. There's Tremor, second game in a row on Diablo. And Weary Day making the move to the Prince himself. It's Anduin. Give it up for Chili Mountain. And over on the red side, we got Legacy on Stukov. Mysticles on Yarel. Godfilth on Tychus. BKB is back in the house, this time on Johanna. And Noah playing the solo lane. Malthiel makes some noise for the Seapog X fan club. How are they doing this with double bruisers? Malthiel, uh... Uh, likely going to play more of an assassin type role here. I'd imagine the Arel is going to be split off to the top lane. So that's interesting. Level 1 talents up. It will be on a pale horse for Malfield. So maybe he's playing solo. I, I don't know. What do you guys make of this? Yeah, Noah's going to play solo lane against Blaze. So that means Yarel is going to be playing Disruptor here in the four man rotation. Okay. Already finding a Diablo getting flipped over. Here's Mason Blaze. Getting some free damage out with that Fend. And bottom lane. We'll try to keep you guys here for just a bit. Yeah. Let me know at home. Have you seen this before? The uh, double bruiser. Yarel mouth. Your legacy being booped around there by Junkrat. Finds an avenue out. And will be just fine. Now throwing out some of those slows. Tremor. Uh, stuck in the silence as well, makes it out, but finds a stun now on the Tychus, flipping him over. There's the medallion pop I got, Phil. Barely getting some healing toxin from Legacy. He's going to survive. And still no first blood, crossing that minute 20 mark here in just a second. Camps are available, but first on either of them will be Chili Mountain. Roger playing the Junk Rat. He's the first to start that up. Silence is here. Blaze is kind of stuck below 50% health. Walking through that lurking arm. Pops his medallion and gets the leap of faith from Weary Day at the final possible second. Anduin with the save. Keeping that first blood off the table for now. And making Anduin look easy there. Little sidestep on that chastise, gonna keep everyone from the Seapog X fan club safe for now. Noah's made the rotation here towards the mid lane as now they have five heroes showing Blaze and Junkrat top and bottom. Looking for a fight on some of these heroes at mid, but aren't gonna quite find anything worth value. Diablo's just way too healthy. Level four talents now being picked up for both of our teams. As finally this camp's being looked at, a late camp this time for CPX fan club. Not the standard play here on Infernal Shrines. Usually on cooldown, grab this as much as you can. Uh, but here in game number two, trying to save it a bit. Maybe waiting for that shrine to be active and make their move now down to the bottom siege camp as well. Legacy starting it up. Some of the strongest auto attacks in the game for any healer. They belong to Stukov and he's really good at helping take these camps. And you see exactly that here in the bottom side. Neutral siege camp picked up by the CPX fan club as they're going to make their move towards the mid lane. Looking at level 4 talents, it is the Black Harvest for Mephisto. 
Uh, that is a tech pick into this Diablo for sure, into this Blaze uh, even double. But to me, that's going to signal they're going to move him out of the solo lane and into the four man. You want to be on heroes and get those stacks going early and often if you have this Black Harvest picked up. Needs 180 stacks, currently only at six. So we'll follow Noah as this game progresses, but for now, clearing up that top wave. Had a booster camp there, had to finish off the Shaman, now making the move into the pits. Going to find a few stacks there. And CPX Fan Club. A lot of value already. 22 Skeletal Defenders picked up. And Malfield's going to help secure a lot more. Charge in from Blaze, but that Jet Propulsion not putting him in a good spot. Doesn't connect the stun and ends up losing a lot of his health now sitting in his own fire. Back up towards about 45% health. Going to head in again, but another miss on another Jet Propulsion. Zanaris might go down because Yarel is leaping in, but Leap of Faith in the other direction. Leap on Leap. He does go down. Malfield's got the chase, and that'll be first blood of the game belonging to the CPX Fan Club. Medallion use from Anduin going to be wasted. He's down as well. Now silence in on Diablo. The mace is there from Mysticles. Trevor still wants more. They're going to give it up. Only three more skeletal defenders are needed. And these will be grabbed. They're going to actually hold at 39 just a bit longer. Get some of these waves where they want them. Malfield also up top trying to extend this XP lead just a bit. He got all the way up to 62 stacks on Black Harvest here. That was a lot. 56 total during the objective. Welcome to the chat. E. Kevin saying Chili Mountain Pog Champ, C. Pog X Fan Club Pog Champ. Double Pog Champs for both of these teams. You'll love to see it. And this will be a three-quarter level lead right now for the CPX Fan Club. First objective of the game, John Cena over the wall. As one of these towers is going to go down momentarily. Tychus here throwing a bunch of those auto attacks at it. Like I see a few of those big boys Stukov punches as well. They get through the wall, but they won't get through the fort. They're going to start rotating away. BKB thinking about... Waiting on a rotation here, but Junkrat's got it scouted out. Checking some of these bushes with the grenade launcher. Did find Johanna. And now Anduin, Divine Star, going to check it out as well. And that's enough for BKB to rotate away. They know he's there. Diablo actually takes control of the bush. Now Iron's going to have to be popped early. He's able to get out. Cooldown usage and with their level 10s around the corner. I think they go for the fight anyway. Uh, I think Johanna should feel safe. I think still has the medallion available as well, if she needs it. Do they find a fight down here in the bottom lane? So far, no. Quarter level left until 10s will be locked in for Chili Mountain. And they're waiting behind their walls. Don't want anything right now. It's only Blaze extended here in the top lane. That'll give enough room for this bottom lane siege camp. 10s being picked up will be the ball. Lightning, not the Valkyrie here for Cassia. Bunker. There's the Riptire, the Light Bomb, and the APOC. Other end, uh, didn't mention this yet, Tormented Souls for Malthiel. Trying to pair him with that Black Harvest. Not the last rights to finish off a Diablo here. Interesting tech pick. Will it pay off? You don't see too many Tormented Souls. I want to say thank you in chat, DB Smiley. Uh, bringing in a party of 13, I think that says. Why is my... Okay, there it is. Yeah, party of 13. There we go. Tremor finds a target. It's Malfuel. And that'll be the first skill of the game. A very quick pickup there for Chili Mountain. Caught out. No way to get out. Heading towards the top now. Where Blaze is going to have to deal with a Shaman Camp. But has a few extra heroes along with them. Tremor is going to wait for their move to come out. And that is the move. Going to take care of one of those towers. Blaze going to finish off the Shaman. Easy pickings for him. Uh, we do see Incinerator Gauntlets picked up at level 4. Pairing in nicely with the Adrenaline Stim Pack at level 1. That is a lot of wave clear for Blaze, who's playing the solo lane here in this matchup. Going to need use of all of that during the Shrine fights as well. And you saw it get some value there in defense up against the Shaman camp. Malfiel still double soaking is the biggest surprise for me. Uh, now at 82 stacks on Black Harvest, he's halfway through, uh, or at least almost halfway through the 180 
but not going for heroes outside of the objective phases is definitely slowing him down. I'm surprised they're not using Yorel for this. Uh, and now Weenus bringing in a party of 13. <laughs> Welcome, Weenus party of 13. This is the Storm Division week number three. Game number two here between Chili Mountain and the Seapog X Fan Club. Uh, you guys at home continue to pick the Chili Mountain to win these things uh, game after game. You had them in the pregame, you had them in game one, and now you have them here in game number two as your winners. Chat deciding to stick in the corner of the Chili Mountain, and right now they find themselves ever so slightly down on XP and kills. With objective number two active on the map, a very strong shrine game here for the CPX fan club with the help of this Malfiel, uh, who's getting a lot of the work done by himself. The rest of the team trying to fight as now the APOC comes out. Oh my god, what a god medallion used there by Noah. Avoiding the charge APOC combo. Now going in with Tormented Souls. He's going to get a lot of stacks here. Just one use sending him all the way up to 130 stacks. So Murder, that's why I'm not worrying about it during the non-objective. I'm just going to pop Tormented Souls later on and get almost all my stacks completed. But he did pay for his life. So is it worth it? I don't know. There's a medallion used from Yorel. Going to get her out didn't have Arn Defender, and that will likely end up costing them this objective. Malfiel dead for another 10 seconds. 25, make it 26. Skeletal Defender's already secured here for Chili Mountain. They're leaving Blaze in there by himself, and I already mentioned he's so good at taking care of these uh, Skeletal Defenders that really no worry here. Just leave Blaze in the pit. The rest of the team can fight. And that's exactly what we're going to end up seeing. Finally, the CPX fan club going to leave. malfield has got to head towards the bottom lane to clean this up. But let's watch this Arcane Punisher top lane now for Chili Mountain. Looking to finish off the first fort of the game as none of them have been down on either end as of yet. This wall's already dead. Malfield's not here in defense. And we have a disconnect, still no pause. There's the light bomb. And we do get our pause. So getting confirmation in chat there, it looks like Roger just DC'd an oof coming out from Zanaris. Uh, big thank you to you guys in chat and also to Weenus for hitting that subscription four months in a row. Well played on the 69 bits. you love to see it. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting the Nexus Gaming Series. Uh, and thank you for bringing in that raid. 13 viewers from both DB Smiley and Moist Weenus. I know DB was casting Stoic's match. Uh, maybe some spoilers. Did Phoenix Rising Citrine win? Let me know. Maybe, just maybe, I can convince Stoic to hop in and cast the remainder of this matchup tonight. Uh, I can maybe use this pause here to see if he wants to hop in and join. Uh, want to cast games three through five? We'll find out. Back G in chat, throwing down the pog chat. Appreciate your support. I would love to have Stoic back here. Uh, looks like we're ready to get back in, though, so I'll bring us back over. And just need to hear from the CPX Fan Club. 3, 2, 1. We are back in the game. Light Bomb is there. Good cleanse from God Filthy. Knew it was coming. Had the entire pause break to think about it. Uh, so Light Bomb usage, 60 second cooldown. Meh. Okay, it secures a fort for him. That's worth it. Punisher is still sitting at about 69 health. Look at that. Nice. Uh, Stoic now in chat says, you need me. Yeah, I, did, I, I DM'd you on Discord. <laughs> uh, so maybe we get Stoic here for game two. Bottom lane, there's Noah having to deal with a concert camp in his face. Oh, and now a trap. Pops his cleanse from 13, inevitable end, but that does not get him out. Second death of the game for Malfiel. Uh, excuse me third death of the game for Malfield. He got picked off early in the mid lane. I forgot about that. BKB having to avoid that concussion mine and does. It's just Stukov being knocked around. Good sidestepping there by BKB and this Johanna. 16 is just around the corner. We got the talent screen up for you. So you can watch them click in right as they happen here as they try to take down that. Uh, just had a big disconnect happen. Uh, computer completely crashed. Trying to get back in. I don't know what's going on with my computer. This actually happened to me the other day, too. Um, so I might look to do like a uh, 
like maybe just a fresh Windows install soon. I've been having some sort of weird issue going on. I don't know what the problem is. If anyone knows more about computers than me and you want to help me out later, that'd be awesome. I'm going to try to see if we can load back into this game. I don't know if it's going to let me. Uh, if we can get back in, that'd be awesome. If not, we'll have to uh, find out what happened at the end of that one. Uh, big apologies for missing out on the end of game two here. Uh, Stoic is... Um, maybe going to join us? He's messaging me on Discord as well, so... I don't know. Yikes, that's so unfortunate. I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, got to re-enter some of these informations here. Game in progress. Rejoin. Looks like it will let me back in. All right. Uh, let's go to the in-game scene. Reconnecting. Will we get in, is the question. We don't know yet. Almost in. This may take a bit, thanks for waiting. And we're back in, oh my god, look at this. Uh, all right, Chili Mountain, trying to close it out maybe. They got level 20s, let's take a look at the talents. We have those now. Fort, very low. Punisher got baited towards mid, but this keeps gonna go down. Bye-bye, and I'm maybe trying to close out the game. Odin's been popped by Got Phil. PKB gonna step in, but here comes the Apoc. Doesn't get any value. Mysticles looking to get in here. Pops the Art and Defender. Torment the Souls out as well from Noah. Can he get a finish? No, he won't. He has completed his Black Harvest at this point, but Malfiel is dead. Punisher is still fighting around as Anair is trying to get some of these kills. BKB and Mysticles both very low, but both will end up surviving. Five heroes still up here for Chili Mountain as they're starting to take down the core. Shielding now below 80%. Tremor still healthy. There's the Riptire onto the core. Mysticles without the Art Defender has to go back into the base now. 50%. 40%. Can they get the final finish? Hellgate gets the lockdown onto Stukov Legacy. It doesn't matter because Chili Mountain going to end up winning game number two. Okay, we got to see the ending. <laughs> Bob in chat, uh, apologies to you, man. Uh, you missed half of the game. It is half my fault. Half my shitty computer's fault. <laughs> Uh, so sorry about that. At least we got to see the beginning. At least we got to see the end. It doesn't look like we missed too many kills in the middle of that. Although you see Roger, uh, playing the Junkrat. Maybe Junkrat ends up being the MVP second game in a row. Game one, it was played by Mason Blaze. Game two, played by Roger. Both players doing really well on the hero. Uh, six kills, zero deaths that time for Junkrat. Uh, Mason Blaze as well. Three kills, zero deaths, and top hero damage on the Cassia. Looks like that put in some work as well. Uh, you, you can't let this Junkrat through. He is top tier. He is S tier. He is everything. Here is the final talent screen. I'm so sorry we missed half the game. Uh, not enough words to say sorry. Just sorry. Hopefully it's not going to happen again. Uh, but that's it for game number two. We're going to take a short break. I'm going to see if I can fix whatever might be broken i don't know if i can fix anything i'm just saying that uh but i love you guys for being here hanging through that break and we'll be back in a few minutes with game number three
Uh, so we're already into a draft here, it looks like. Uh, but here is the map screen for the uh, third time tonight. I want to show this to you guys. Games 1 and 2 already won by Chili Mountain. Game 3, Chili Mountain just picked Volskaya Foundry. We're heading into the draft. Let's take a look. Already underway. No bans have been happening yet. <clears throat> but it's CPX Fan Club on the clock first here on Volskaya. Down 2 nothing in the set. Why is this popping up again? Uh, of course, my disconnected all sorts of weird stuff to OBS as well. You will love to see it. There's the band, third game in a row onto Garrosh. Chromie banned out every single game tonight. We were expecting that in the pregame show, and that's exactly what we continue to see here in all of these band phases. Uh, will this be the Diva ban? Diva's been banned out a lot tonight as well. She's brand new into the game. Recently reworked, recently off the ban embargo from NGS, but it's Uther banned out, not the Diva. Maybe thinking about a Diva first pick here. So will Chili Mountain burn their final ban onto Diva with Leave Open the Ana, who's been. Uh, played a lot tonight. Uh, at least been thinking about being picked or banned. It was uh, banned in game two. Picked in game one. And it will be the ban on D.Va. Which leaves open the Ana and the Junkrat. Most importantly, the Junkrat. Who's been our games one and game two MVP. This guy is a threat. And maybe will be enough here for CPX Fan Club to get their own win in this series. But that's going to leave open the Ana. That's going to leave the Grey Mane as well. Uh, so we'll see if Weary Day and Roger get the two heroes they want. Diablo still out there as well for Tremor. He's played that in games one and two. It's going to be Rainer. Mentioned Rainer in the pregame. First time we're going to see him tonight. And it will be Diablo third game in a row for Tremor. So how did they respond to this? Uh, they already have a Junkrat. They can pick up the Ana here. She's still out there. She's still available. Hmm. ETC? Tychus. They still have to worry about percent damage to deal with Diablo, so Tychus has to be their pick. I thought maybe they go with the Grey Mane there, uh, but seeing Roger already on the Rainer, maybe not as scared about... Uh, Roger going back into another gray main tonight. This will be the first game without Johanna for the CPX fan club as well. There's a ban on to Stukov. Was the support in game number two for CPX fan club. And the final ban will of course be on to the sharpshooter healer Anna herself. So they got to dig a bit deeper into the support pool, although they already played an Anduin once tonight. Very well played by Weary Day in game number two. Uh, Leap of Faith saved a lot of targets, especially in the early portion of the game. Uh, Mason Blaze played a pretty good Cassia. There's going to be Deckard Kane and Yarel still open for Zanaris. I think those were easy picks for them. So they got four heroes we talked about in the pregame show on their side. That's been their recipe for success. Just take all the top tier stuff and go out and win the video game. Legacy, BKB, yet to pick. Uh, and then Tori showing on an ETC is interesting. Could be an offlane ETC. And someone left the lobby. BKB, disconnect. Mouth Thrall are the picks. Okay. Uh, so Mouth Thrall are the picks. <clears throat> uh, let's see if we can just get Chili to pick. Ming will be the final pick. Alright, 
So we're just going to set the standard and we'll hop into this next game. Uh, this is Volskaya Foundry. While we got a minute, I'll pull back up our map band screen so you guys can remember everything that happened. Um, who's our captain right now or host? Oh, it's actually BKB. I think he's the one who disconnected. I don't know if he's back yet or not. Maybe he just disconnected from Discord. He's in our lobby, so... Hmm. All right, well, we got to wait for Legacy to get back in here. He's the one who alt f forward out of that draft. And I'll open up a poll. How about that? See if we can get some stuff working, some production value around here. I got to make up for a disconnect. Yikes. Uh, so we're going to open up a poll. You guys have been very consistent with who you think is going to be winning these. You picked Chili Mountain all night long. But I'll ask you again. Who will win game three? Will it be Chili Mountain or the CPX Fan Club? Head on over to chat. Select the team you want to win. Hit submit. Help us out. We have everyone back in. Um, hmm. Set. To standard and we'll skip that draft again. I don't know if BKB is here. All right. Well, they're going to try to get that settled for us. Votes are coming in. And this time, maybe a bit more support for CPX Fan Club. <laughs> so Neris just said, BKB, more like BRB. I'm so funny. Uh, Failfish. <laughs> <clears throat> well, in the meantime... I'm going to run a quick ad for us. If you are trying to support this prize pool for the Storm Division, you can do so by heading over to Matcharino. Exclamation point Matcharino in chat. Here's a quick spot as we wait for these players to return. That's right. Uh, prize pool, uh, last I checked, was over $1,200. Let's see if it's climbed. It may have climbed since then. Uh, da, 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 da. Current prize pool is sitting at $1,254. So if you want to see this prize pool grow, you want to support these teams, head on over exclamation point Matcharino in chat right now. And uh, throw a buck or two. You don't have to throw a whole bunch. Every dollar helps. Maybe you just want to put in one dollar. Go for it. You can make it twelve hundred and fifty-five dollars in the prize pool. Now, wouldn't that be something? Uh, Zanaris asking, do we want to swap the standard? Or I mean, that'd be great. Uh, da -da -da -da. Set to standard, we know all the picks. Thank you, GLHF. Ready. All right. <clears throat> Votes are finished. 50% going to each side, so CPX Fan Club did get a bit more support on their end. Uh, double checking these picks. Should be Junkrat, ETC, Tychus, Malf, Thrall. Who are they missing? The Junkrat. There's the Junkrat. This side, Yorel, Ming, Rainer, Deckard, Diablo. Okay. They did it right. We're good. I, uh, I audited. I, look, I have a book, okay? I write all the picks in my book. It's sloppy handwriting. Can you tell? It's enough to get me by deal with it chat okay 
Volskaya Foundry is up next. As you can see, we're about to be loading in. I'm going to flip us over so you can watch this loading screen. I'm sure you're as impatient as I am right now. Best of five tonight. Chili Mountain up 2-0. This could be it. And the sweep if they're able to take Volskaya Foundry. Let's load on in. Let's start introducing some players here on the left side. Up 2-0 already. It's Daenerys on Yarell. He's already played this hero a couple times tonight, right? Uh, no, just the one time in game number one. Excuse me. Uh, Weary Day on the Decker Kane. Roger playing Rainer. Tremor third time tonight on Diablo. And Mason Blaze on the Li Ming. Give it up for Chili Mountain. And over on the red side, Noah going to be playing Tychus BKB on ETC, Legacy on Malfurion, and Tori on Thrall, and Mysticles finally getting the Junkrat for CPX Fan Club. Give it up. They need a win here to avoid the sweep. Can they make it happen? This bomb is for you, says Junkrat. Trying to turn the tides of this series. Will be power hungry at level one for Li Ming. There's a sapphire for Mr. Decker Kane. Of course, it's ace in the hole for Rainer, trying to do a lot of damage, especially this frontline ETC BKB uh, did go into, of course, the block party to help prevent some of that damage, not only on himself but the rest of his team. So that means a little bit more help is going to be needed for Mason Blaze on Li Ming. Will he be able to walk away as your game number three MVP? That is the question here. A lot on the shoulders of Miss Li Ming here on Volskaya Foundry. Bottom lane matchup is going to be Yarel versus Thrall. Here comes Roger in support. Going to help Zanaris out early game. Tap there from Thrall who's already down below 50% mana. Has to get that back quickly. You do see Rolling Thunder grab at level 1. Uh, so he'll be getting a bit of extra healing done as both teams are looking at their first turret camps of the game. Who's going to be quicker? It will be the CPX fan club by just a moment. Both sides going to have access to a turret now. Decker came with one. Malfurion with one. The support meta. Checking out that support camp pit. Now Junkrat going to set up with a concussion mine on and make sure no one's going to try to activate that guy. Uh, tough going when Junkrat's here. Able to interrupt, boop you off the point, steal away your turret, get the XP as well. And aggressive rotations coming out from ETC and Tychus, walking through the enemy side of the map. Now finding Decker Kane, Weary Day, falling very low. The minigun damage in from Tychus, but Noah has to dash away quickly. There's a medallion pop by BKB. Does he have a power slide to get out of here? Because now Yorel dashing him back towards the team. He does have that power slide. Will be just fine. But the attack potential and... Uh, the attack angles even from Yarel hopping over the wall making BKB sweat for just a moment there even without Nintori nearby uh, they're able to get away able to survive and have a slight XP lead here heading towards uh, our first control point of the game 30 seconds away here control point A is up first of course neither side has started up the support camp but Junkrat has this thing locked down concussion mines there uh, he's got the trap down as well. Level 4 will be the Chattering Teeth. That's the annoying one, especially around control point A. Even worse around the other two control points. We'll see how much zone control Junkrat's going to be able to provide here to start off the game. For now, though, it's BKB. Trying to slide through, but does get locked in. Scroll of Ceiling finds him there. Nice roots from Legacy. Zoning out the rest of the Chili Mountain squad from taking care of the remaining health on ETC. Junkrat currently up top trying to get level 7's going. There's Mysticles going to rotate down now as Li Ming rotates up. XP still pretty even. Another scroll of ceiling. This one hits on to 2, but not a lot to worry about. No one else nearby to finish off that engage. Now Junkrat setting up with those shattering teeth around one of these entryways into control point A. Level 7's are online for CPX fan club and there they are for Chili Mountain as well. BKB on the opposite end of the map here fighting against Diablo. Here comes the minigun damage from Tychus. Throws out that grenade as well. Power slide through Yorel to get BKB back to safety. Here comes the top side of the fight. Noah very low and Roger with that ace in the hole. Rainer gonna get the first blood of the game. Now looking to get ETC as well but got the Rainer damage there that time. They're not able to finish off ETC. 
So they do get the first kill, a big one. Uh, did they use turrets? Looks like Weary Day is still holding on to his. Uh, Malfurion back at base still has one as well. And we're 51-51 on the point. Level 7 will be the Calamity. Renorus in chat wondering if that was going to be the case, but it is. Triumvirate at level 4, Power Hungry at 1. Li Ming, uh, I've seen this standard as standard for Li Ming recently. A bunch of turrets available. Uh, they haven't used any of them yet. Tremor takes the majority of the damage, sitting at 79 souls right now. Needs some potions from Deckard, as both those turrets are down. ETC trying to find your rail. There's that self-cleanse from Zanaris. And he'll be able to get away as well, my goodness. Deckard came with some potions there, and now with those turrets being used, that is all the firepower expired for the CPX fan club, and still two turrets being held onto for Chili Mountain. Gonna take care of one of those traps. Here comes another one from Junkrat. As Tremor's gonna walk in, instantly pop it, sitting with a lot of health. First turret down. They find Malfurion charging the back line from Diablo, but Legacy's able to walk out. Roger below 50% health, does not have his self heal yet. Needs some potions from Deckard as they finish off Malfurion. Gets a potion, and now they're looking to finish off ETC as well with Power Slide through. He's gonna be okay. Mason Blaze trying to chase in along with Tremor, but ETC makes it out. It's Rainer who falls. First kill of the game for CPX Fan Club, but they lose this Triglot Protector. And that'll be a lot of damage. We'll see which direction they take this. Did they get the mid wall? I don't know. They're gonna just try to get level 10s as quick as possible. Hopping out of the gunner seat is Yorel. In goes Diablo. As maybe they get to Oh! Tychus! You can't be there, dude! This is a big boy! This is a robot! Deckard Kane and Diablo securing the kill onto Tychus. Seemingly out of nowhere. We saw it coming. Obviously, Tychus didn't. That one's gonna sting for a while. Stage dive is the pick from ETC. Level 10 talents are being locked in. Will be the wave of force for Li Ming. Ardent Defender, of course, in this Hyperion now we see from Rainer. Opposite end will be the Tranquility from Malfurion. There's a stage dive, but already on a mount was Roger. Playing. Perfect combo as Entori's getting a lot of healing with this Earthquake. Makes it out alive. Gets in the area of that Malfurion heal. As now I have a big lag spike. And reconnecting. Are we still live? I think we're still live. I'm back in? What's going on? Alright, we're back in. Did we miss any kills? I don't think we missed any kills. Uh, Stoic's in chat. Hey, Stoic, you were supposed to be joining me. Zanera says, phew. <laughs> I guess they saw I disconnected. Yikes. I got back in quickly, though. Uh, as the problems continue, my apologies continue as well, chat. If I can help this right now, I totally would. I'm not going to let it disrupt from the cast. Hopefully, we get to go uh, unimpeded for the remainder of this. But if anything happens, my apologies are with you guys at home. Are we streaming right now, by the way? I can't tell. I hope we're streaming right now. I'm in game. Are we live? Uh, chat seems to be raging. So now I gotta check to see if we are live. Okay, yeah, we're live. Okay, we're good, we're good. I think? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're good. I think? Dudes, I have no idea. Are we live or not? Well, I'm going to keep an eye out and see if we are live. I think we are. Top lane. Yeah, we're definitely live. We're 100% live. Okay, confirm. I confirm. Stream dropped for a minute there. I know it did. I know it did, Story. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. A new terminal will be ready shortly. A new terminal will be ready shortly. Control point B up next. First protector was picked up by Chili Mountain. Of course, they're up 2-0 in this set already, trying to walk away with their first domination of the season here tonight. Uh, their first win of the season here tonight. They've lost both their previous matches, but looking so good here in match number three. 
Uh, the teams they lost to, VGM Gaming and Team Alexander, two of the best teams in the Storm Division. Some think Chili Mountain might be the third team. Uh, either them or Exodia. Either way, having an 0-2 record in week number three is not the way they wanted to start their season off. A win tonight would mean the world to them, and a domination would be even better than anything else. So I'm expecting to see them try to close it out right here in game number three. BKB is going to set up on this point. 36 has already been channeled for Chili Mountain as another support camp just spawned in. I saw that fly through my screen. Junkrat's got some traps down. He's got his concussion mine as well on the other side of this wall. They want this fountain. And without enemy heroes here, they just walk right in. Nothing in their way. Take care of that fountain. That's going to help them out during this control point. 50% already channeled up by EDC. Back there on the point. Now they're setting their sights onto the support camp. Now they're going to get that as well. This is the power of Junkrat allowing you to do things like this without having to worry too much. 70%. They don't have level 16s, but look at Chili Mountain. Moments away from 16 for themselves. Trying to finish off ETC. Pops his medallion. BKB makes it out alive. Has that biotic emitter on hand. Couldn't afford to die and will survive by the end of that. Now his 16s here are not on the other end. They're looking for a fight. BKB does not go back to base. He stays in here. Uh, of course, has that stage dive, so would have been able to get back into the fight at moment's notice. But gets enough healing from Legacy to make it worthwhile just staying here. I think that's okay. Kromka86, I love you too, man. Thank you for the support. Tremor has a full soul stone. This is where Diablo loves to feast on enemy heroes. He's like a great white shark just coming out of the shadows 36 miles an hour like a torpedo right into a wall chopping you to bits and flipping you all over the place. Doesn't find a target yet but he does hear the Odin being popped by Noah. Big shots coming out, and there's the Earthquake as well, but in response to Hyperion, Stage Dive hitting onto Zanaris, but Yurel pops hard Defender, she's going to be okay. Rip Tire doesn't finish off any heroes. Tremor still sitting with 20% health. Yurel without the Ardent Defender now stuck in the roots and will be killed. A great kill there for CPX Fan Club, turning it into two as Roger goes down. Make it three. Diablo's going to fall here. Mystically is getting that finish. Junkrat Baby. Resetting the stacks on Diablo. The Great White Shark has been defeated. But here he comes again. He says, I'm still hungry. Chomp, chomp. Tremor gets a kill, but here's a trick off protector. Uh, cleanse from Noah. And dashes out. Well done. No one in the protector. Legacy caught outside. Will he go down? Slows in from the Haradric Cube. They get the finish. Mysticles, he's in trouble too. Stunned into a wall. But Li Ming needs some health. Had to leave that for a second. Oh, Calamity's in and gets the finish. Tychus could be next. Resets available for Li Ming. Can't finish off Tychus yet. Orb hits. Finally gets the kill. That's all five. Uh, ETC's down in the bottom lane. But, I mean, you don't see this every day. This is a protector. No one inside. And this little boy, is he MVP of the game? He's going to get a 100% kill onto this protector. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, 35 seconds remain. We'll see if anyone's able to get in there as it looks like Chili Mountain's going to rotate away from that protector without finishing it off. Uh, Thrall is in this top lane. 20 seconds? Yeah, probably not even worth it. That'll be second fort uh, up against an enemy objective phase. Huge swing there from Chili Mountain. As now they're... Oh, man. Malfurion rotating at the wrong time. Just had to pay for it big time. Now ETC's in trouble. He's stuck out. He's going to be chased down by all five members of Chili Mountain. BKB will not get out. There's Li Ming looking for some magic missiles, but Diablo... Just continuing to charge in. His soul stone is completed again so quickly after losing it the first time. Those kills help out so much. And Tremor for the third game in the row 
making Diablo look like the smartest pick in the Nexus. They're going to be able to steal away this turret. Thank you very much. We'll take that. And speaking of taking things, level 20 talents are about to be taken as well. A two-level lead right now. Diablo Hellgate's in looking for Tychus. Can't quite finish off Noah. The dash was just barely good enough there from Tychus to keep himself alive. But they're going to lose their siege camp as this siege continues for Chili Mountain. Level 20s are up. Hellgate's going to be on cooldown for a bit from Diablo. We also see the Seraphim picked up again for Yorel. Uh, this is Respect the Elderly for Deckard Kane. Going to blind those targets when they wake up. That's going to do uh, a lot of damage to a Thrall and a Tychus who are looking to get some auto attack damage out. And Rainer just going with Weak Spot Acquired to help reduce some armor. What do you guys think? Is there any chance for CPX Fan Club to come back in this game? Are they completely demoralized at this point? They got themselves an objective but didn't get any value out of it. Lost all their out of outer forts now and are fighting from behind without their level 20 talents. Look at Tremor. Just waiting in the shadows for anyone to walk through this choke again. Last time it was Malfurion. Uh, any target will do. They're just being as patient as Pi here. Oh, they're going for it. Hopping over the wall. Roots are down. They won't find the target. Tyke is alone up top. He knows he's free for a bit. They're going to start that hearth because, uh, you know, it doesn't have a fort to retreat to. Stoic saying this looks like a volleyball team with all this setup. Uh, yeah, I'm going to lob it. You're going to spike it. We could have been doing that casting together, Stoic, but, you know, you had to go play Storm League with your team. I blame you. Rainer's going to grab that Siege Camp, timing it out along with Control Point C on the bottom side of our map. Level 20s were just picked up. Actually, I'll keep this up a moment longer. We're waiting on a few of them to come in. We'll be Earthen Shields for a Thrall. That could be a game changer as well as this extra oomph. We saw this picked up earlier by the opposite team when they had a Junkrat. Uh, and the Serenity picked up for Malfurion. Reduce that cooldown. Maybe get it up more often, but it's really only going to be one team fight. A quick kill, perhaps, they need to protect against. Diablo looking for the ETC that time. Here comes Li Ming. There's a stage dive right on top of the same targets. Apoc was thrown down a bit early, but ETC is going to go down anyway. The Silence is in as well. Li Ming starting to get the resets. Makes it three. Legacy low. Wave of Force knocking him around. Diablo looking for the Hellgate does not find the flip onto Legacy. There's the Haradric Cube. They pull Legacy back. And this might be the beginning of the end. 50 second death timers. Heaps are still alive right now, but they're going to head towards his bottom lane. Foregoing control point C. They want to close out the game. Sidewall onto the keep. Zanera's going to soak up a lot of it. Does not have the Art Defender, but they do have some of these turrets. Junkrat, extra oomph, a great defensive ability, already getting a lot of cooldown reduction, only 15 seconds until he's going to have it available again. He's the only one here in defense of this core push, as Chili Mountain's going to try to walk away with a 3 nothing sweep tonight over the CPX fan club, but Li Ming says, you shall not rip another tire at us. That's going to be the end of the game. All five heroes down on the side of the CPX fan club. And before the 20 minute mark, and before my computer disconnects again, Chili Mountain have secured themselves the domination victory tonight over the CPX fan club. All right. Take a look at the match summary brought to you by Nexus Gaming Series. Wow, Mason Blaze does not die again. 6-0. and oh, uh, He's your MVP of tonight, but we got to give a lot of honorary mentions. So this Diablo played in all three games by Tremor was one of the scariest Diablos we've seen in all of Storm Division thus far. They had a game plan. They went out and picked that Diablo all three games and made it work. Uh, even there in game three, he lost his souls, got them all back so quickly, turned those fights, found those picks. Uh, APOC all three games, Hellgate all three games. 
All you need to do is find one target, kill that one guy, win the video game from there. Well done by Chili Mountain. They get their first win of the season. It's a 3-0 domination over a very strong Seapog X fan club. Uh, I'm going to pull up the talent screen as I try to reach out to Mason Blaze, see if he wants to do an interview with us. Um, interview? Oh, that's caps. I don't want to caps him. Interview? NGS Lobby. Uh, I'm going to get in Lobby 1 here. See if Mason's able to join us. But wow, that was great. That was really good. I'm going to put up our map screen so you guys can see how this one took place tonight. And we're going to wait a few minutes to see if Mason is able to join us. Uh, looks like we got Zanaris joining us, actually. Welcome to the stream, and congratulations. 3 nothing win, and the first victory of the season for Chili Mountain. Uh, did the team get the monkey off the back tonight? Uh, sure. Whatever that means. Well, I mean, um, am I wrong in saying you guys dropped your first two games, of course, against two very strong oh, yeah. teams, VGM and Team Alexander, but do you guys mm -hmm. feel like uh, some weight is lifted off your shoulders finally getting a win? Yeah, for sure. Um, Like, honestly, I expect it to be like, oh, yeah, you know, we had the first series, we went one and three, and then the second series was really close, went two and three. I was like, you know, we're just going to reverse that. We're going to go with three, two today, really close <laughs> again, but we'll get the win. Um, we forgot the two. <laughs> actually, to, to speak to that point, the pregame show we did, uh, Stoic actually chose you guys to win three to two. That was his prediction. But Ooh. the domination, that's got to feel good. We get out of here early tonight, and you guys can go, you know, practice up some more Storm League, whatever you want to do, in-houses. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot a, of stuff going on. A quick one tonight. You played the URL tonight, one of the strongest solo lane heroes in the game. I'm going to give you some mm. time to talk about her. You also got to play in game number two, the Blaze, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I did. So talk about your heroes tonight and how you felt they went. Well, let's see. First game was a pretty standard draft. You know, first picking Junkrat, going with strong Diablo Ana because that was left up. Um, and the URL, yeah, like, like you said, she's a strong pick. If you want a tanky frontliner, if you want someone to like follow up and dive, if you want someone to just like be independent, stay safe and wave clear, she's got it all. Yeah, um, she, she really does. Especially mm -hmm. when you guys have Tremor playing Diablo all three games. And the game plan is find one target, kill one target, we'll go from there. And when you're able to take care of the rest of the team, macing them away with your rel in those fights, mm -hmm. it's a game changer. Yeah, I got some lucky uh, swings off of Malfarian. I canceled some Twilight Dreams here and there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tonight we got to see a lot of Junkrat. You mentioned his name previously. Uh, mm -hmm. Two different players got to play at game one. It was uh, Roger, I think. Game two was Mason, or maybe it was vice versa. Uh, they had to take it in game three. So mm -hmm. Junkrat is top priority when it gets through the ban phase. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, it's kind of weird because like Junkrat, when he got the mini rework done to him, he was like a decent pick, but he's never, he was never like, you know, first pick, first ban ever since like this meta came out. And honestly, it's slightly refreshing, but I'm also slightly like, <laughs> you know. Your, your teeth are chattering every time he's picked. <laughs> yeah. Horrible pun, I'm sorry. Well... Yeah, but that aside, it's like, he's got a lot of control, you know? He makes just doing anything for any team just harder somehow. Like, oh man, sure. if I want to engage, I have to blow Medallion. Or if I go in, I got to make sure they don't, like, get a CC chain on me and then I'll just die from W boops sure. or something. Or it's like, oh, we want to invade? We can't because they have Junkrat. Like, a yeah. lot of that is just, like, controlled by him right now. Yeah, it's the zone control, and, you know, maybe he plays second fiddle to Chromie right now with her slowing sands, the zone control she can provide as well, so much slows. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel as though Junkrat is maybe a bit higher priority than Chromie? Well, that kind of depends for what you need. Like, some people, or rather, like, some players have higher priority on Chromie just because, like, they prefer her or they can play her better than they can play Junkrat. You know, it's two sort of different play styles. Um, like, Chromie's got a lot of, like, overall solid damage. 
and decent zoning, but Junkrat just goes a bit more all-in on the zoning and pick potential there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So have you had a chance to look ahead on your schedule and uh, look at some of these teams remaining here in the Storm Division who you haven't played yet? Of course, I already mentioned you guys already played Team Alexander and VGM mm -hmm. Gaming, two of the top teams in the division. The other one up there is Team Exodia. How do you feel matching up against those guys, and is that a team you feel confident that you're able to take uh, a big win up against? I mean, I don't think it's going to be an easy win at all. Like, everyone got here through just, like, you know, playing games well and getting in. Um, so we can't really, like, discount any of their performances. Um, but after this win, we do feel a lot more confident in ourselves. Well, that's always good so, to hear. Um, yeah. Tonight's matchup, it was a quick one, but I'm sure there was a highlight moment that you can recall that maybe swung around one of those games. Someone on your team you want to mention as really being an MVP performer tonight. Anything you want to say about your teammates? Ooh, goodness. Well, let's see. I mean, first I have to thank Wary Day for subbing for us last minute, you know? Yeah. Um, of <clears throat> course. And I guess, yeah, I'd have to thank everyone. I'll just go down the list. Like Mason, <laughs> you know, going from... Like, we just swapped from solo lane and healer often, and now he's on DPS, you know? Yeah. And there was that, like, one moment in Volskaya around the top lane where, you know, we were just down a couple people. But then we got some picks thanks to Tremor and Mason and Wary Day just, you know, 3v5ing, getting picks. And I don't know. That was unbelievable, to be honest. Um, Yeah, Tremor, he's no longer her Johanna one-trick. He's a Diablo one trick. There you go. Um, he's going to be perma ban later on. And Roger, you know, I don't know how he does it. Like, he just plays always well, even with like a high ping. Yeah. You know, he got forced off the gray main. Yeah. No longer a gray main one trick either. <laughs> he played a good Rainer. Mm hmm. Well, we were uh... thinking about Chromie sometimes for him, but we decided against that. Yeah, if she can get through a ban phase. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Well, Diva drew some bans tonight. She's uh, fresh into this mm -hmm. uh, NGS hero pool. Uh, but yeah, it's still Chromie bans all day. So maybe eventually we'll see some more Chromie. I think we did see you guys play her last week one game. Um, I was able to cast that. Was it you guys or the other team? No, actually, was it? Hold on. I got my book here. Maybe I can find it. Yeah, no, you guys did play a Chromie last week. And you got a win on Dragonshire. Look at that. Oh yeah, that Dragonshire game, what was it? We had Yeah, we had Chromie, TC, Karazim, Greymane, Urel. Yeah, good memory. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> Definitely just not looking at my screen at the replay. Oh god. Alright, alright, I gotcha. <laughs> well, hey Zanaris, thank you for joining us for this interview. Um, of course. Okay. Uh, as we're closing out, you got some room for some shout outs. So if there's anything else you wanna say, anyone else you wanna shout out, now's the time, the floor is yours. Uh yeah, uh, first shout outs to you for casting, you know, great job as always, dude. Unfortunate that, you know, like some of the DCs happen and, you know, casting got like interrupted, but yeah. I mean, I hope it worked out. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, shout outs to the audience as always, you know, just for supporting NGS and Gears of the Storm, you know, they're all breathtaking. <laughs> and uh, shout outs to um john knight because yeah that level seven w talent on your route really like it now there you go so mm -hmm. congrats again best of luck moving forward the rest of this division the rest of this season and hoping to see you guys reach the playoffs thank you all right we'll talk to you soon chat wow uh i'm gonna bring us back to the caster bench here um Thank you for hanging in here with me through the troubles tonight. We had a disconnect. I had another little lag blip there for a bit. I don't know what happened. I blame my computer. I'm going to have to try to fix something. Uh, but you guys have been absolutely outstandingly amazing tonight with all the support that's come out. A lot of raids coming in. It was Linehouse, DB Smiley, and Moist Weenus bringing in a ton of viewers for us. Uh, Weenus with that resub. Weenus dropping some bits. Now, final bit there at the end of the night from Lever Garfius. Thank you for that one as well. 
uh, all the support, all the love. It all belongs to you guys at home. All the follows that happened tonight. Thank you for supporting the Nexus Gaming Series. We hope to see you back soon. I, uh, you know, let me check when our next match is, because you guys at home love to know that stuff. Um, and I might even be able to tell you the caster as well. How about that? Let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. It's in here somewhere. Oh, wait, it's in this channel. Okay. All right, next match will be Thursday. Thursday? Thursday the 24th. That's right. At 9 p.m., it'll be Regen versus the other Koreans, hosted by Crushinator. And then you can stop in on Friday at 10 p.m. if you want to watch Team Exodia versus VGM Gaming, casted by Tetcher. And then on Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern, Jinxie Cat will be hosting Can't Think of Name versus Team Alexander. All those matches taking place right here at twitch.tv slash Nexus Gaming Series. That's it for me tonight. Uh, you guys have been incredible. Next week, we'll have back Slexia. Thank you and shout out to Stoic for helping with the pregame show once again. Uh, on the money with that analysis, Stoic. You'll love to see it. Uh, hopefully, you get to go back and rewatch the show later on and see how good you did. Uh, but for now, that's it. We're out of here. The show is over. I love you guys. Can't wait to see you back next week for the NGS Game of the Week. And Majid's gonna be able to finish him off. Three kills, a triple for BFM. And now Diablo being surrounded. Fade falling to 25% health. Condemn and Diablo's down. That might be the actual play of the game. They find another kill. Apocalypse coming out though. Red team. Oh my god. Red team almost got him. Axon jumping over to get some kills. Um, oh, Ragnarok getting the concussion mine, knocking him out into the fray. Oh, the definition of unlucky.